1999, the General Assembly passed Resolution 54 out of 120, which declared 12th of August International Youth Day and recommended that public information activities be organized at all levels to promote awareness, especially among youth of our program. Now, which is, brings us now to the International Youth Day in our country, which is uh, being an event observed globally on 12th of August in accordance with the UN General Assembly. Now, this year's theme was about education. Uh, a lot has been done since 6th until today they were in Kuala. Uh, we'll be getting to business maybe tomorrow to see uh, what happened throughout the week. But for us here tonight, we'll be talking about the youths and leadership. We want to see where are we, what is happening, and do we have a future as youth? We move to our discussion tonight. I'll begin with Python because he's in the leadership, uh, you lead a group of people, Vijana Wongozini, that is. Uh, there's a cliche in our country, I don't know whether it is in other countries, where we say the youth are the leaders for tomorrow. Does it hold any waters? Uh, thank you, Hilary, and uh, also thank you for having me. Um, I believe that uh, the young people have a place in the society. And uh, that society exists today, doesn't exist tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And so there are um, thoughts, there are uh, things that we can contribute to that society. Mm -hmm. And um, a good example is in the old times, you had uh, the young people going out for war and you had the old wazes who are acting as the wise counselors for a particular community. And so I believe that um, it's a wrong cliche that uh, um, it's a misconception that we need to be 40 and 50 and 60 years for us to engage in leadership. So I believe, and I'm a firm believer, that uh, the young people with all their strength, with all their creativity, must participate in leadership uh, for today and also for tomorrow. All right. Winnie Obure, what's your take on this? We all know it's a lie, yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> because when you say young people are leaders of tomorrow, which tomorrow? Who is even sure about tomorrow? <laughs> so I think for me this is, uh, you know, part of what the older leaders have been using to hinder young people from accessing, especially political power. Mm -hmm. So they will start saying you're leaders of tomorrow, when in real sense, we are leading, even now, young people are leaders in their different capacities. We are leading our companies, we are leading organizations, we are leading our houses, we are leading movements. And so it only comes in when you look at it politically. Otherwise, young people are leading in so many spaces, but they are not recognized because we know that political... Uh, um, the political space is where decisions are made, major decisions are made in this country. Sure. Yeah. Uh, Dan, can you hold an office back in your county? Yes, yes. Would you say, indeed, your tomorrow is now? Uh, first of all, happy International Youth Day and to our viewers. Mm -hmm. My take on the same is that, uh, despite the fact that uh, it has been said that the time for the youth is tomorrow, there is no tomorrow. Look at the history, what the youths of this country have done. Look, if, if we start from Tom Mboya, what he did to this nation. Look at what, when Kibaki was given a position in Kano, he was a youth. Look after that generation, what happened? The multipartism, the Railas, the Madibas, and now we are the next generation which we must know our cause. We must not allow the elderly to say that uh, the youth, the space for the youth is tomorrow. All right. It is today and it is now. All right. That is my take. Mm -hmm. Winnie, I'm coming to you with a different question, but you also put your input. Now, do you think the current youth have been given the necessary support they need in order to become the leaders we all opt or dream to become as youth? Thank you for having me tonight. Uh, to refer to the previous question first, uh, I would say yes and no. Because my opinion is the old people have stayed longer in this earth. It is the young people who will inherit. So to some point, yes, they are the leaders of the future, those who will inherit. But to use this statement to hinder the youth who are already capable, who are willing to start now, using that statement to hinder them is 
wrong. Mm -hmm. And uh, the next question was... Um, uh, are, are we given the necessary support that we need? I think no. Mm -hmm. One thing is, the youth, if one youth is ready to go out there, seek for votes and all, he or she is diminished. He or she is told, Ngoja Kesho, wewe haufai kuwa kwa kiti. You're not supposed to be on the table. Mm -hmm. I think the support is lacking. Mm -hmm. Secondly, on finances. If a young man would go to his or her dad or the parents, could you fund my campaign? Mm -hmm. I don't know how many parents would go to that level. There are, but I don't know how many would do it. So I think support is really needed. And hearing them out is most important. A, a young person has views, opinions, but he's told, no, I think you should listen to us. But if they are there, <laughs> the opinions of the youth would be mm -hmm. elevated higher, yes, because right. they have the wisdom. Okay. Um, Python, you interact with young people in your group. Uh, there is this narrative that to to be politicians because we are young. If it's an organization or a company, my hard work will propel me higher. But now we have a political position that people have to vie for. There is an issue of inclusivity uh, in line with the UN General Assembly that say this should happen to the youth. Do you think the current governments that have passed maybe in the last, say, two terms have given the young people the support they need? Uh, <coughs> the support that I've seen... Um and especially in the constitution, I think it's for women and their affirmative action which gave them, uh, I think, the two-thirds gender rule. But for the young people, I haven't seen a lot. I've seen support in the areas of empowerment um, uh, through the national and the county governments, but uh, there is little that has been done. If there has been any affirmative action uh, in engaging the young people in taking them into leadership positions, I haven't seen none. Because my belief is, um, and especially now that we have devolved uh, county governments, I think uh, we should have some re reservation for the young people. Uh, a CEC uh, for sports and youth needs to be a young person. It's as simple as that. And so th we haven't been given that support. At least the constitution gives us the young people the right to vie, the right to... Um, you know, join a political party, and uh, yes, that's in the constitution, but uh, in regard to the national governments and county governments, I think they have done little, um, and so we have uh, been excluded uh, completely, completely. All right. Yeah. Uh, Winnie, what's your take? Do you feel, because as an activist, I'm sure there are those times that you would go on the streets to say, Vijana to Mekosa Kupatikana, but like there's a question on the BBI team. Uh, people are saying there is no youth there and it is something that people are not comfortable with. Now, what's your take? Do you feel like oh, indeed we have in, been included in some of these uh, particulars? I think inclusion alone is, is not enough. We do not want young people to be included in conversations just because they are between 18 to 35 years. We want meaningful engagement that even before the BBI was introduced who are the young people that were brought on board to start this conversation because just don't want people to come up with initiatives and coming up with uh, agendas and say now we need young people so that you're just gonna fill this space you know so you look you know just for affirmative mm -hmm. processes right. and so they say they look around and say okay so we are four older people especially men, and then now we don't have a woman. Let's bring Winnie Obure. We don't have a youth. Oh, I think we should bring Anne. So we're not, the kind of involvement that we have in this country is a sickening. You're brought on board to just tick boxes. So what I think from an activist perspective that needs to happen is that we have to engage youth before we come up with agendas mm -hmm. during that period where the agenda is going to be implemented mm -hmm. and even in uh, inclusion in terms of uh, reviewing and monitoring and evaluating mm -hmm. so we can hold each other accountable but when you say for instance bbi and we know the history of bbi right mm -hmm. the sad reality is that most of us especially at the ground do not even know what it's about. 
right now I've seen uh, as of two weeks ago I saw they're engaging other young people and talking about the youth perspective on the BBI mm. the but that, that comes in mm -hmm. way after even decisions have been made this morning I was hearing a joke in our in our usual youth meeting in Cambio mm -hmm. and you were saying uh, someone was just mentioning to us that uh, referendum is fanyika you know, results are already known even right now. So what we are waiting for is the date, you know, to just do the process and then we'll have results. Right. And I mean, it's not far from the truth that who are the young people right now? And today being uh, International Youth Day, that do we even have young people between 18 to 34, come at Siende Sana, between 18 to 34, who are influencing decisions that politicians are making? Mm -hmm. Decisions, like you said, are the county level and at the national level very few mm -hmm. and those few the question is who are they kwa sababu unataka mtu akuwe ni kabila yako ama akuwe ni relative yako ama ikuwe ni your or nephew or your friend mm -hmm. so engaging young people who deserve and merit is really important and that has not been uh, happening b before i let you go on that point the youth that are, uh, will be merited in this area. Uh, for an example, we have young parliamentarians, uh, a few of them just to mention like Babo, you know, <laughs> and, <laughs> okay. uh, and the rest, they are they already in the leadership. Mm -hmm. Why were they not involved in the BBI? Because now the question is, do we have the youth who have what it takes to be in such a panel? Do we have such? Uh, you're kidding me, Hillary. You know we have. We have very many young women. But then um, where that are you're they? That question. We, we we, will we always be on the streets to, to say we were not included, we were not consorted? Wh what forums should we come up with or what effective forums should we have to ensure that we have been included? You know, what is interesting is that uh, a youth will not just wake up one morning and find themselves in a space. You will not do that. True. It is a lot of hard work hmm. and smart work. You just don't wake up and go. Because we have so many barriers, including structural barriers. Right. That the time these people are even having this conversation, they don't engage the youth. And that's what I started by saying. Mm -hmm. That you will have um, some of these amazing initiatives that you're having. But because the older people don't want to give you a chance, they, they have their own interests. You don't even know that that, it's, that kind of a thing is happening. So unakuja wone kwa TV, uskize kwa radio, but you don't know exactly what is happening. So I think for me, the constitution is one that recognizes, and that's a step, recognizes young people, 18 to 35, which gives even uh, space for the female youth, you know, young women between 18 to, to 35. Sometimes you're seen as, oh, you're a girl, and then once you give birth, you're a woman. Like in a potelanga, space here, young women, kukwa youth, it's always, you know, sure. very gray. So just to answer your question, if the leaders of this country want to literally engage us, they know where to find us. Mm -hmm. If they put this aside their greed mm -hmm. and self-interest, mm -hmm. you know, and selfishness, honestly, we are everywhere to be seen. Mm -hmm. And even you, I mean, you are a, you are a young leader and, and uh, all of all us right. yeah, I, I think I should be moving that question to uh, Python. Uh, I'll be coming to you much later. Python, you have a group. Of leadership yes. now how much has your group been involved by say the government in terms of coming up with policies and overseeing how youths will benefit from such uh, things um, so uh, we have uh, tried as much as possible to actually engage our county mm -hmm. and um, I'll give an example of um, an empowerment program that we wanted to bring all the filmmakers uh, Together. Unfortunately, we never received uh, a lot of support uh, from at, at county level, uh, but that doesn't um, uh, discourage us. We will still continue uh, moving forward with our agenda, which basically is uh, equipping uh, the young people to enter the political space. So it's not really attached to uh, the support, and I think uh, maybe this is um, the assignment that the young people uh, should do, that uh, when it comes to political leadership, uh, we won't be given um, those positions on a silver platter. We, so we should not have that expectation mm -hmm. that because Python wants to vie for Senate or for MP uh, in Embu, that uh, the, the, 
the, the current politicians will just give a no. Mm -hmm. So I think, um, as Winnie has said, uh, that we need to be very aggressive uh, mm -hmm. and we need to be very strategic and very uh, smart in regarding to, you know, uh, championing the causes that we have uh, as a young people. Right. So what we do, we, we train and we equip young people because the government won't come to train young politicians so that they unseat them. Uh, that won't happen. So I think it's us, the youth, engaging with our fellow youth, identifying uh, the strengths and the weaknesses that we have, and basically coming up together, synergizing together uh, for that particular cause that um, uh, that we hold to in our hearts. And because we are, we are the majority, and I think it's just that bold step uh, of action that we need. All right. And uh, he has just mentioned that the other politicians will not come to tell you this the path you should take. But now, how can the young people be effectively uh, nurtured to participate in the national agenda in terms of uh, leadership? And who would be these mentors? Okay. Uh, maybe I would expect the elder politicians. Pick one. Uh, for example, the young MP from uh, Meru. Uh, I expect one of the elder MPs in his home would take him up, take him through the leadership, uh, the way the, the structure of Kenya's government, mm -hmm. allow him to grow in this leadership. So I think if leaders were not, I'll use this word, selfish, you know your, your, your time is already, is almost up, you're going to go, pick one young man mm -hmm. or a lady, mentor them to this to take up after you. So I think that is lacking so much. Mm. And maybe to use an example which may not be very good to people, the embrace movement of the women. They have decided they are going to take it. We want 50%. Mm. What about the youth? I think we should also come up with something we want also. The remaining 50%, maybe we take 25. So if I you think take that 50%, mm. where is the boy shout? <laughs> <laughs> It's 50. Mm -hmm. Okay, I have nothing against the boy child. But you see the boy child will, will contest like other uh -huh. men, but uh -huh. you already have the 50. So we are contesting against this other 50. Uh -huh. So still the boy child has been left and is a youth. What should be done? Maybe a correction. I said an example. Mm -hmm. I didn't mean to, to right. actually use that okay, thing. <laughs> yes, it's still okay. You don't have yes. to make it like a big issue. Right. Yeah. People are the, 50 yeah. women, 50, 50 men, men, which is excellent. If and it comes in between there, <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah, and there's no war. Okay. Actually, women leadership is not a competition with men. Mm -hmm. It's allowing a woman in her body, in her nature, okay. in her esteem to participate. Don't tell me to just sit back because I'm a woman. Uh, I do not expect a man to tell me you were in the kitchen, you're supposed to be there and I'm supposed to be here. If I am able to, let me be allowed. The same as the youth. If this youth is able, has the competence because you just don't want any other leader, any other youth, because you're a youth to represent us, you need to have character, mm. integrity. Mm -hmm. So if all these things are there, why not? Mm -hmm. Yes. All right, Duncan, what's your take? So, actually, my take on the same is that uh, we as the youths, we have been sidelined very much. My sister has just spoken. If we look on what is happening currently, the young people were given power, which we should be happy of. But at the same time, these young people, we as the young people, we have started just to say that uh, they are not working. Mm -hmm. They are our fellow youths. Mm -hmm. So actually, even if they are not, at least they are not trying, let us boost, uh, boost them on the same. So they should, the, the young parliamentarians, they are the people who are supposed to help us. Because we are, we are not in parliament, they are, are supposed to help the young people so that they can bring bills. You have asked my sister that, for example, where I come from, what have we done as the young people to be included in <coughs> governance? You know, what is happening is that uh, these politicians, the big fish, they are using the young because we are energetic. And uh, actually, I can tell you a person 
who feeds your stomach, controls you, and that is what is happening on the ground. So after an individual has been given something, they usually call it handout. Me, I come on the ground, that young person won't listen. And that young person, until we as the young generation realize that it is not all about mm -hmm. the interest of our of the politician, but the interest of all Kenyans and all young people. Mm -hmm. So, youths, first of all, you ask that, how are we going to be empowered? I, reaching these politicians after electing them, we are the young people. We can't reach them. That is a fact. So you, what do you do after? After that, so we don't have any option. We, ne we, we plan for the next general election mm -hmm. so that we can say okay let us choose the person who is on our age who has those leadership qualities mm -hmm. who can represent us who we can reach at any given point all right yeah okay that's a very good point there because actually we have seen that uh, we have people out there who are elected and they forgot about the young people they used even to throw stones now uh python <laughs> Yeah, it's true. They were throwing stones after the election because uh, some of them were not satisfied. Now, discrimination, corruption, and some of uh, bureaucratic policies have really barred young people from holding offices. What do you think should be done moving forward? Um, let me speak about uh, uh, maybe corruption and the money factor mm -hmm. uh, that um, affects our politics. Uh, that's number one, if I'm a young person and I'm buying against uh, a big politician with a lot of money, uh, chances are that, uh, you know, the money factor will affect the electoral process. Mm -hmm. um, and I think my, 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 my way forward is, and, and I still go to Winnie's point, that uh, we need to know our strengths. Um, if I know that uh, 2022 I'll be buying, I don't need to start in 2021. And I think um, as much as we are blaming the old politicians, I think we, we as the young people mm -hmm. uh, are to blame ourselves. Um, when I know that I'm planning to buy, I need also to plan myself. If I don't have the money and I have the vision in me, then I need uh, human resource. I need people to help me. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes I feel that uh, we are not uh, <coughs> really that aggressive. Mm -hmm. uh, because as we have mentioned, it will not take you just saying that I want to be included in the political space. Mm -hmm. uh, you will have to sacrifice and it will cost you a lot. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, for the young people, regardless of uh, you know the opportunities we have not been given, I think it's up to us to also um, get to ask ourselves, Nini ni tunataka na Kenya yetu, nini tunataka na generation yetu. Mm -hmm. And so, when we have asked that, uh, that question, then we will know the work that's supposed to be done, and then we will start doing it. So to a large extent, I think PRCC, mm -hmm. we, we are the people to blame because we, we have not been bold enough, and we have not been courageous enough. And for the young parliamentarians, this is my plea. Uh, for an old politician, it will be hard for an old politician to leave his business to work with you. But for the young politicians, it, they, they, they owe it to their young fellows. So I am appealing to the young politicians to hold someone's hand. Kama Duncan and Ataka Kuvai, please, Babo Winom Shikilie, Sakaja Shikilia, because um, it is the young people who will uh, empower. Uh, the young people, and it is us ourselves who will make a name for ourselves. All right. Winnie, uh, Python has, has mentioned about finances, and indeed this is an impediment to miss most of the young people in terms of campaigning. And also there's that policy, if you want to become, say, a governor, you need to have or to be this kind of a person in terms of your worth. But also there's this uh, factor of education. I, before we begin, I just gave you an example of maybe someone is in the rurals. Uh, he does very good. An example in a society, coffee society, for those who come from where coffee is planted. We have a person who is a chairman. He never went to school, but he's performing wonders. Projects come, they flourish. But this person can't hold any office because he has no education background. Such policies have barred many youths from holding offices. What do you think should be done? As a youth, uh, what if you take up that policy? Mm -hmm. It is barring me. 
how can I, what can I do to jump this policy? I'll be ahead of the policy. I can go back to school. Mm -hmm. I'm still young, get the desired qualification and, and go for that seat. Mm -hmm. However, we know there are leaders who are leaders by themselves in stature, whether with education or not. So I thinking this policy needs to have to be checked again to so as to allow the youth with different dynamics mm -hmm. to also be included on the table. Mm -hmm. So I think the youth just need to to come out and express themselves, even as this policy is made. Maybe someone would have said this mm -hmm. is barring this and this particular set of group. Mm -hmm. How about we check in again with this policy? So I'm thinking it's possible, whether with the policy mm -hmm. or not. All right, we need, uh, our population constitute of youth and women being the majority. But the question still remains, why haven't we taken over? Mm -hmm. Why haven't we? And then uh, what is the role of, of the youth in the economic development, especially in the urban centers? Thank you for asking that question. And I was really hoping that you asked something in that line. <laughs> Um, so I'll tell you, yes, true, we are majority as young people and as women, and I'm happy to be speaking for both for being youth and, and being a woman. Mm -hmm. And the truth is, like I said before, you just don't wake up one morning and go for political leadership. Because let me ask you, so tell me the three biggest uh, political parties in Kenya today. One? ODM. ODM? Jubilee. Jubilee. Any other? Wiper. Who the are the party leaders? All men, right? Yep. Yes. At least older men. That is where the problem starts. All right. That we have persons, our political parties in Kenya are not just vehicles to help you ascend to power, but they are individual property to people. Like, I wouldn't go into ODM right now and you know, rise as I am expected to. Because there's a lot of politics within the political parties that does not easily allow young people mm -hmm. to get into it. And one of the things is the financial support, like uh, the, the, the res financial resources. Mm -hmm. That you need money to get into the party, you need money to start campaigning, you need money to run around, you need everything. And you're a young person who is only 20, with this big vision of being an, uh, a member of parliament for your area. Mm -hmm. So the truth is, young people have good ideas, they have the time, they have the energy, they have, you know, all it takes to be leaders, but they're cut out mm -hmm. just because they do not have connections to the political parties. Mm -hmm. So this problem is very deep. And the way out, for me, is for young people to decide and say, now we've seen where the problem is. Mm -hmm. That is, political parties just part of the problem mm -hmm. and the fact that we do not have <coughs> enough resources. Mm -hmm. But also, it is high time for us to now say, and I totally agree with you when you say the, that we need to throw ourselves out there. That let's throw ourselves out there, but not only as individuals, we come as a team and say, as young people, we are about 290 who are going to vary for mm -hmm. you know, these posts in our different uh, uh, areas, mm -hmm. so that when we meet in Bunge, we have a critical mass. Because there's no point of having like an individual, two or three conscious young people to get into power. Mm. And then once you get into parliament, you can't change any bill, you okay. can't strengthen any, you mm. can't pass anything. Mm -hmm. So it's not just about having specific young people to get up there, but we need to have a critical mass, so many of us, so that when you get into parliament, mm -hmm. we are conscious enough and you can be able to introduce and pass bills as needed. Oh, all right. Uh, I'm afraid our time is up. I didn't know we... <laughs> A lot of time. But anyway, uh, your final comments, I'll begin with you, Duncan. Um, what do you think or what is the future of the youth? And by the way, what would happen if we have maybe a 30-year-old person becoming the president? Okay. Briefly, as we finish. Uh, for now, I can say the future of the youth is luminous. And uh, if we, we as the young people realize that uh, we have elected leaders who are our mentors mm -hmm. and they've become tormentors, mm -hmm. then we should kick them out. Mm -hmm. And if we elect a young person, mm -hmm. then I'm sure mm -hmm. the future of this country will go far because he or she, mm -hmm. the young person, mm -hmm. will bring new ideas on the table which can help this country. 
Right. Yeah. Uh, I've, <laughs> I've heard <laughs> that rhyming words, our mentors becoming our tormentors. They should be out. All right, we need. For me, it's very simple. Mm -hmm. This is the time. This is the time for us to take over. Mm -hmm. And literally taking over everywhere. They've been showing an example as, you know, older politicians. Some of them have been in the political space for the last 30 years. And I felt personally offended when uh, one of our senior, uh, you know, persons in this country, Mudia Warif, I mean, for God's sake, um, was given. But sometimes you get to a point where you need to rest, you need to relax. Mm -hmm. So I think for me, everybody who, is, uh, who has been in this for this long and has not changed anything, this is our time, and as young people, let's get up and stop complaining. Mm -hmm. Let's now just stop agonizing. Let's start organizing and move it forward. Mm. It's Thank unfortunate you. they don't retire. They're always given later duties. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right, Twini. Yeah. Uh, uh, and, and Yes. Mm. I think uh, the youth is the high time. Mm. So we come out from behind the scenes. Mm. We'll be in front of the scenes. Actually make the scenes, uh, change the scenes to our own liking, to what we can handle and let us support each other. Mm -hmm. If Winnie is, is able, why shouldn't I support her? Mm -hmm. But we also need to look at integrity, not just any other youth. Because mm -hmm. any other youth will come and will just follow the other trend. But a youth who has integrity, it's possible. If a country can vote in a DJ, Kenya can vote in a youth 30 years or even below. Wow, wonderful. Python. Your final words. Yes. Uh, so every generation has its opportunity. So the young people who are there in the 80s, 90s, they fought for um, multi-party democracy, as Stan can say it. And so it is us. I, I think we are the ones who have been equipped with the tools of fighting tribalism and corruption. So we not only just need young people, as Anna said, but we need young people who are, you know, visionary, like the likes of Tom Boy and Thomas Sankara. We also need young people who have values and young people who have uh, who are above reproach and they have character. So I believe that it's not just about just removing the old politicians, uh, but also trying to tell them that we are, we, are, we are not only addressing the issues of the young people, but you're also addressing the issues, uh, national issues from health, from education to corruption and everything else. So I totally believe that this is our time for Vijana Wongozini and this is the time uh, for the young people to take power and just to, you know, decide the destiny of, uh, of uh, this great nation of Kenya. All right. Uh, thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen, for coming. They have been my guest, Duncan, who has said mentors uh, who are tormenting us should be let go. And Winnie Obure, an activist, she is saying uh, time is now. And if uh, we voted, uh, which country voted for the DJ, then we can have our 30 year old as president. That is Winnie, uh, that's Anne Mwangi and Pithon. We believe time is now. Many thanks for keeping it Y25. For coming up next is Y Mashariki. I see DJ Tiska is very much ready and Relbis, Ken Relbis, who will be joining him later in the program. My name is Dereva Hillary. I'll see you again probably tomorrow. Have yourself a very good night.